I decided now is the best time to start the vlog for uh, Thursday, September 10th. I went and checked the date. It is September 10th. I had to do some offloading uh, of data from a satellite, so I did that. And then it had a time and date stamp on it, so it showed me that it's September 10th. Uh, I had the first batch, uh, the first... Um, Taste the first pour off the uh, freshly brewed, brewed pat, uh, brewed uh, batch of tea. It's, it's called Pu'er. Uh, it's a tea from China, and it, I I get everything loose leaf. I don't I don't buy bags. It, it, I haven't bought bags in a long time. Uh, and uh, I uh, infused it with date and, and uh, peach gum. So the the brew mixture, which is the, it's a cold brew mixture, uh, is the is, the primary is the Huor tea, and then uh, I uh, mill dates and uh, peach gum. The micro component is the peach gum. In terms of the in comparison to the uh, the date, so the date is definitely uh, the larger of the two. And I found with the with the uh, cold brewing process, I let it sit for two days. It's a two day process, but halfway through, uh, after the first day, you remove uh, the. Uh, uh, the date uh, uh, I have these tea balls, so and that, that makes it easier to do the infusing and stuff like that. You get less product left over, less filtering required, and what ends up happening is you you pull out the the the, the uh, date tea ball, the date material, because if you leave it in, the date the date flavor overpowers. The flavor of the uh, Pua or tea. Both flavors are an acquired taste. Not everyone's going to like them. Uh, I will know in about two weeks uh, what the physiological effects are. I know what the physiological effects are for um, the Pua or tea by itself. Now let's see what happens. Uh, now a lot of added the date and the peach to it. So. Uh, it should be interesting. Interesting to see. I know date ha the dates have a lot of vitamins in it, so it should be. This should be a healthier tea, uh, but it remains to be seen. Now I want to see it does it have the same um, effect in terms of its uh, intestinal, you know, support. The pure tea by itself. Helps keep the colon, the lining of the intestines and the colon, the, the colon clean. It it prevents things from uh, sticking to the wall. It's kind of like, <clears throat> it's kind of like like it almost not as not as caustic, not as 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 bad as uh, uh, Drano for the for, for your intestines. Uh, Drano and all these other they have these uh, called uh, pipe clearing uh, uh, techniques. Referring to your sink and your drain, uh, look at your, your at, at the uh, at the GI system from the throat on down, as a piping system. And understand, particularly uh, not in the upper part, but in the lower part after the stomach, uh, that materials get clogged on the get stuck on the wall, the line, uh, the walls of the uh, of that pipe. Well, how do you clean that out? You, you know, because it builds up after the, over a number of years. And uh, the poor tea does that. It, do, it, clean, it, it appears to be clearing, clearing out the lining. And as it clears out the lining, uh, what's happening is uh, my curve is flattening. That's the way it is. Normally, you, you walk around, you, you look, take the side of you, and you start to look pregnant. That's, this is what it looks like. Here's your head. Here's your, the, rest, the, the lower part of the body where your legs, hips are. And here's your stomach sticking out. Well, it's kind of it's now flattened off like this, so it it it, it has had a good effect. 
And as it, it, since I've been having the tea, the, the poor tea, uh, that's what's happened. When I didn't have the poor tea, I was using, I was having oolong. Uh, it didn't have any impact on my intestines whatsoever. It was only after I was using the poor tea uh, that it, it flattened the curve. And uh, so it remains to be seen what will occur next. So, anyways, uh, this is the beginning of the day. Uh, waiting for delivery probably sometime around two o'clock, uh, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon. I'll get the, uh, the first uh, grocery order. Then uh, tomorrow afternoon I'll get the next grocery order. Well, I'm at the research desk because at this point in time, at midnight on uh, September 11th, actually. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> I'll correct it in the uh, graphics above if I'm wrong. Because I had some gaming to do. There was a bit of a touch-up I have to do on, um, on, on Lord's Mobile, so I did that. Sometimes these games that I play, uh, the games lately that I've, I've been into, they're, they're not on the sort of leisurely fun aspect of things. They're from a different perspective. Uh, if you're going into the live action role play games and you intend to do the live action role play not based on a simulation or, or, or fantasy, but you intend to get into it with a, what we call a real scenario, and there are ways of doing this, then it's best to have a simulator that simulates the environment that you want to get into so that you can f test out in the simulation some of the moves you want to do, some, some, some of the different strategies. And this is sort of what Lords Mobile does. It gives me a way of testing various different ideas and uh, uh, strategies that I want to sort of pl play out. You, know, you get yourself into a situation. Well, how do you deal with that situation? Uh, what are your ethics? What are you willing to compromise? What are you not willing to compromise? In other words, you have to. Sometimes you have to make decisions uh, in getting to the better point. You have to make decisions that are not perfect. You will never be in a perfect situation. Reality is fundamentally different from hypothesis or theory, in that nothing is textbook. Reality is fundamentally different, and there are different. Uh, approaches to doing the reality. There are some approaches where if you make a compromise, you can't come back from that compromise. So you want to make a compromise if you have to make the compromise, if you have to do a negotiation. You want to do it in such a manner, you want to present yourself in such a manner that you leave yourself room to maneuver within your own sense of ethics, your own sense of self, so that you're not trapped into a position that contradicts or fundamentally contradicts uh, your uh, ethical position. Because once you've done that, once you've compromised your ethics and your ethical position, now you're in trouble. Because now they can start with your ethics, your moral standing is your base. Hit the person at their base and you start wearing away at them. And this is the problem. This is what they, they often in warfare they talk about the uh, uh, slippery slope or, or, or the moral dilemma. Typically, we, well, we're going in on the right side. Our side is right. And so it allows us to make certain moral decisions that we ordinarily make because well, we have the moral authority. problem with that is, and taking that assumption, is that it can lead you to do things in compromises with your own morality that provides a clear and in, 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 in present contradiction that puts yourself in a contradiction contradictory position in terms of your own ethics. And that starts whittling away your own ethics. You start doubting it. And the thing is, this is why you do have to examine yourself. You do have to examine how you approach things. And make sure that you're approaching things from a perspective that you're not going to regret later on. Now, while you're always going to make mistakes. You can understand there's always mistakes that are going to be, nothing is going to be perfect. So you need to understand that in, in, in cases where you do make mistakes, that you have to be able to come back from them. 
and you have to deal with the mistakes as they unfold or as they evolve. And no position is, you got to understand, no position is absolute. So you take this understanding, you play it in your game, you play it in your sim, but then you bring it into your real, real world LARP, live action role play. And the thing is, this is not a, you're not doing LARP as a fantasy, you're doing LARP as a reality. You're doing, you're taking into a real, into a real position and a real uh, uh, scenario rather than a fictitious or a um, call a, a, a fantasy role play. This is not fantasy role play. This is taking taking it a step beyond. And there is that option to do that. So this is how a game. This is what I like doing for gaming. And this is how things are involved because my gaming at this point in time involves an enormous amount of history. So this is my history course. Friday, September 11th, and it's 6 o'clock in the morning, and it's time to end another vlog. We're ending the vlog for Thursday, September 10th. And we do run 24-7. And I got up around, uh... Went to bed, I think, around 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Took my break. Uh, I had finished the YouTube stroll for as far as I wanted to get with it. Uh, came out done, and then I went to bed. Got up around 4:30 uh, to do some gaming. Been doing the gaming and meditation since then. Uh, today on Friday is the day I begin the fasting meditation. So uh, every Wednesday, Friday, I do the fasting meditation, and it's an, uh, a longer uh, prayer meditation that goes along with it as well. So I'm up doing that. I will be going to the back to bed shortly. Uh, but basically, I've got a good YouTube stroll going. I've got a good path. The path is fundamentally Yowie Vlogs. That's the beginning of the path. You go to It's Our Life. I go by and visit there. Then I go to um, the Leroy's. From the Leroy's, I go to Our Family Nest. And from Our Family Nest, I go to Family Five Vlogs. And then what happens is I've decided to group the different, uh, uh, we'll call the alternative paths, the paths that I'll be getting to uh, at some point in time during the day as the day continues. Uh, I've put them in the in those points along the path. So in Family 5 Vlogs, there's Briley Ann. She's part of the Family 5 Vlogs. She has her vlogs there. But I also put in uh, uh, Kayla Davis. That's where I am at right now. Uh, I stopped at Kayla Davis. I was watching her. I caught up on all, all her vlogs. I did some binge watching because I hadn't watched them for a bit of time, for a while. Uh, so I caught up, and that's those are the teen vlogs. Uh, I also have some. Tw I also have some tween vlogs that I can go take a look at. There, there, there are tweens that have now started their own channel and they've done their own work. So I have that as well. Then there are, there are two families that have added to Clintus. Clintus has his own spot uh, on the uh, YouTube stroll. And along the Clintus path, I put in uh, two families who are doing RVing, who, who, who travel the road on our RV. So I've added those two, those two uh, to the path as well. So then as I go, well, basically as I, what I do is I go back down the path again from... Uh, from Family Five Vlogs, where Kayla Davis and, and Barley Ann are, then you go back down to uh, Our Family Nest, and there is uh, Carly Reese. That uh, Carly Reese is uh, the daughter of Our Family Nest, and the boyfriend of and the girlfriend of Chase is Ash is Ashen. So I have her channel there as well. So uh, there's a number of channels I can jump off of there and into sort of the, the side channels. Uh, so I have a nice, good pathway back there. Uh, then I go to the Leroy's. The Leroy's have, again, a, another whole grouping of channels. This includes the, the uh, Shumways. Uh, uh, then there's uh, Clay Leia. 
uh, from the uh, from the Ohana Adventures, uh, or called Toa. Uh, but I put her there because I associate her more with with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, Kesley. And so I have been watching her vlogs along with Kesley's vlog. So uh, that's why that, that grouping is over there. So th that, that's how I think I, everything is kind of grouped out. Um, it's Our Life has Evie Rich and Cappy Rich. And I think there's another family inside there as well, but I can't remember exactly who else I have in It's Our Life. And then uh, uh, back on the Yaoi vlogs, uh, I've got Nelly Knows, uh, uh, Alley of the Rose. Those are the, uh, the, the I have all the kids from, from the Yaoi vlogs. I have their vlogs in there. In addition to one of the families that goes by a lot is known as the Good Bits. They're in there as well. So, uh, I have a good stroll to, to sort of walk through as I go through the internet and do my YouTube stroll. Uh, and that's my TV. It's, it's, that's my reality TV, and so that's kind of what I enjoy. Anyways, uh, we'll end this here today, and it's as per usual. It doesn't matter whether you feel, you're, you feel like you're worth it or not. No refunds.